we're making we are making progress the winners coming towards a close but sometimes they take time other times they move swiftly so a couple of drawn out but uh, hopefully we are we are moving forward a concern that, that well maybe things have stalled a little bit in time is, is running out in, in the window that, that Hibs have brought players I, with, with the greatest respect to any team, it's not about them, it's about us. And I said from the very outset, if we don't sign anyone in the window, I'm more than happy with our squad. They, they Don't forget this squad is five points clear at the top of the league, they're in the Petrofac Cup, Cup final and they've got a cup match next weekend. So they're not doing bad. The squad's in good shape, they're playing well, so it's not a panic for us at all. If we can find someone at the right value that adds the quality we're looking for, we'll do it. If not, we're perfectly happy. Is, is the money there to, to get yeah, as I say, if we if we find the right players that add that value, we'll, we'll move. So the money's there. We haven't lost a player yet, so we're very comfortable. It's always said it's a difficult window, this market. Have you found it more difficult than perhaps you anticipated? No, we, we said, again, think back to the, to the very start of the window. January's such a tough one. You know, teams are in teams are in the top tips in their playoffs, whatever it may be, whatever division, they're reluctant to lose their best players. Teams who are fighting rele relegation, even more reluctant to lose their best players. So it's a difficult one. It's very hard to get your business done. Nowhere near as, as complicated in the summer. Far easier in a longer period of time. This is a tough window. But we're making progress and if we get one or two over the line, then then fantastic. If not, we're in a strong position. You see you're relaxed then but not bringing anyone in. How important is it that you are not forced into almost, you know, panic buying in the last day or we won't be. We won't be forced into that. We never have done. Um, sometimes they do take longer. That's a, that's the nature of business we're involved in. But there's the worst thing you can do is panic buy for the sake of it. I think we create. The, we do create. The market creates this, this countdown. You know, it's done superbly well on TV. There's no doubt about that. Fantastic entertainment. If you're sitting there with your feet up watching it, but if you're involved in it, I think you can make poor decisions. And the danger is you, those decisions cost you. So if it's, it's the right player adding the right value. The right quality will move. If not, I know you won't. I know you won't comment on specific targets. Are you able to perhaps explain a bit about what it is that you, you, that's that's taking the time, or, or what it is that, that are providing a stumbling block? Every deal is different. Every deal is different. The valuation of a player can be different. That's the obvious one. Terms required or demanded by the player or agent could be another one. Add-ons could be another one. Term of deal could be another. There's so many different. Um, factors that can impact a, uh, such a deal. So it's not as simple as people might at first think, and they do take time. And both, I think everyone, any negotiation, all parties have to leave it feeling comfortable. If you don't, they don't go ahead. When you talk about the valuation of a player, th does that come from yourself and the coaching staff, or does that come from board level? It comes from us in terms of what we think is value. It comes from dialogue with the, 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 you know, the boardroom, the management structure, uh, as to what we think is appropriate for the club. It's as simple as that, and we, we have to discuss it. That's the dialogue, and, and we're confident in our judgment. If we get some wrong or get some right, that's fine, but we're paid to get more right than we do get wrong. Get seven out of ten right, you're in good shape. So it's about dialogue and discussion. We have great communication channels here, very happy with that. And we know what we think are appropriate valuations, and if, if they're successful, great. If they're not, then we move forward. You touched on this at the top. Um, the squad you've got is five points clear. Are you absolutely comfortable that if Monday comes and you haven't added to the squad, that that squad is strong enough to lift the title? Yeah, I think we've proven that. Yeah, I think if you th if you look back at the very first game of the season, we were told oh, tough start for tough start for Rangers. That was what we were told, and another tough away test coming up, or another tough opponent here, or they got relegated from the Premier League last year. Big t the boys have responded every time a challenge has been put, put before them. They've responded really well. So, all credit to them. You know, they're they're in good shape right now. They had this so-called mini crisis and they've come back from the hip performance exceptionally strong. Morton was another tough place to go to and whilst not at our best on Tuesday, on Monday night, we again, we were comfortable in the 2-0. So we're in a good place, you know, there's no doubt we're in a good place. But if we can add some quality, every team must always look to add quality if it's available and it suits all parties. I appreciate you focus on your team, but would you accept Hibs have strengthened well in this window? I, well, I don't know what well is. I, I don't mean rude, I'm not being rude. Obviously, they've taken a, a proven striker, um, one or two out the door, one or two in. That's their business. But it's, they, I wouldn't expect Alan Stubbs or any other manager to talk about Rangers' business. I, why would I want to talk about their business? Our focus has to be here. That will never change. If we do what we do well, we're five points clear in a good position. If we don't, if we're ill-prepared or we lose some focus or training isn't of the same intensity, then we'll have a problem. There's no doubt because the teams are putting ones together. The gap from third to fourth tells you teams are putting ones together. The chief said a few months ago he was, he was prepared to over invest in January to ensure that you got promotion. The critics would say that that hadn't happened so far. I mean, do you get any issues with what that? It depends how they see that. What does over invest mean? Over invest doesn't mean being uh, wasteful. 
you know, spending cash unnecessarily. The fact is it's got to be good value for the club. The club's been through some tough times. It's important that we get the, the foundations right and move forward in the right manner. And that means spending the cash wisely. That's not, that's not, being, um, that's not having cash unavailable. That's making sure the cash we do have, we, we use wisely and appropriately, and which we'll do. So we, 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 we set our levels. These are our, our levels of what we think are appropriate for an individual player. If we can, if we can uh, secure him, fantastic. If we can't, we move forward. Simple as that. So, so when you say that you know it's about valuing whether a player is, is worth the money, looking at Tumani Diogaraga who went to, to Leeds, was the decision then that the money that Leeds were paying for him wasn't Again, worth it? Again, I'm never going to talk, we never mentioned about clubs, individual players. We're never going to talk about that. We only talk about players when they're over the line. That's always been a way and that, that won't change. But any place, think about buying a house. If you think it's good value, go and do the deal. If you don't think, if you think it's too much, move on. There's other houses available. And it is, it's as simple as that. So we've got to be comfortable that it's good business for Rangers. And if we are, we'll move ahead. Would that, be the, message, sorry, would that be the message then, Mark, to any fans or anyone out there who is concerned about a lack of investment? You, you touched on it. Is it all about, you know, remember the tough times? We don't want to go down that way. I think it's important. I think it's important that if you're going to talk about strong foundations at any football club, it goes across the whole spectrum, all the departments. It's being, it's being sensible. It's investing where we think it's appropriate, where we think it adds value, where we think there's development potential in a player. And I think the business in the summer was good for us. Um, and I think it's important that we try and replicate that. And you won't get every player right. That never happens. You, there, there'll be mistakes. But as I say, if you get seven out of ten, right, you're in, you're in a good position. Simple as that. Sorry, just going back to what uh, Andy's point about what the chairman said about overinvestment. He also said he felt a minimum of five players would be required in this window signed two permanently thus far. Is it maybe better that numbers and figures are not mentioned? Are you becoming, especially in this bubble that is managing Rangers, are you becoming appreciative of the fact that maybe think, numbers shouldn't be thrown out there to, to appease the fans to a certain extent? I think you would agree. My, I've always said one or two. I've always said one or two. I've said that the, the five referred to between now and the start of next season, and I agree. I think in, in the summer we'd have to add more. Uh, and look to the quality and, and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I've always said one or two players. So if they become available and we think they add something we haven't got, that's, I'm always repeating myself, but that's key. Because you don't want to add numbers. I think you see a lot of clubs add players for the sake of it. To almost have that security of I've got another player just in case. And if you get that wrong, you have too many players in the dressing room. You have a uh, discontent. It, it weakens or dilutes your harmony within the dressing room and you have a problem. There's no doubt about that. So I'd far rather go with a, a tight, lean squad that I know that every single player is seeing the first team. If we have that situation, we're OK. What's the risk? Injuries, suspensions, strange yellow cards, and that type of thing can happen. And um, we have a problem. But uh, as I say, if we can have the, um, if we have the resources to deal with it, then we'll be OK. Okay, well, there were some comments from, from him through the week suggesting that if Dave King wasn't to basically give you the, the backing that he promised that it would be a risk that you might walk away then. This is just your response to that. This game is all about opinions. That's why everyone loves this game. You know, whether you go in the pub on a Friday night or you talk about it or the restaurant or you're having a cup of coffee, you're talking about the game because that, and that's why it just um, evokes so much emotion and passion. It's that type of game. It's fantastic. But it's, it's just people's opinions. You know, that's all it is. And some on the other side will say the opposite. And, that, and that's the nature of the game. So, so you're quite happy with the level of support you are just for the yeah, we're, we're in, we're in, you know, Look at this. We're in a good place. If we were eight points behind, hadn't signed a player, come out to the 30th, I'd say to you, we've got a problem. We have got a problem. You know, things aren't working. There's, gap, there's a gap appearing. We have an issue. It's not the case. Touch wood, we've, we've done very well. We're in a good place. There's a long way to go still. Lots of points to fight for, but we're confident and we're enjoying what we do at the moment, so hopefully that can continue. Spoke about the yellow card there, given to Andy. What's been said about it, you are now without him this weekend. Are you relaxed that you've got the players there to yeah, fill yeah. I'm, I'm amused when I hear people talking about, yeah, we believe in our squad and, not, and now we've got a problem. We believe in our squad. Do I agree with the, what happened on, on the game? Absolutely not. But the fact is, we deal with it. And we've got players, whether it's Jordan Thompson, Dean Shields, Don Ball, whoever it may be, Rob Keenan, people can step in and do it. And that's, you, you've got to have faith in your players. I've, I've no doubt we have enough quality in our dressing room to deal with that. I believe you were going to seek clarification from the SFA as to what the offence was. I saw that. I never, I've never mentioned the SFA. I saw that in every paper this morning. All I said was I think it's important that we, we seek clarification because of the nature of that yellow card. So you, you will be in the Yeah, well, I've, I've, you send the emails and, and you wait for the response. And I'm sure the dialogue with the authorities has been really good. So I, I, there's, there's no reason to expect anything less than that. 
But I think it's important we do get clarity because that was a, a decision that I think can open up a can of worms if you're not careful. Is it so you as much as you don't agree like with it then, but is it something that you've, you've now had to say to the rest of the players? You might have to be careful no, whether we agree with it or not. If, if I do that, I think you're almost accepting that as that was a correct decision. So I'm not going to do that at all. The players know what happened. The players know how. They, they, their record this season, I think, has been first class in terms of discipline. So there's, there's no reason to speak this group of players. In terms of Falkirk in this weekend, I think you said they dropped back after last week's result. If you get a to win this weekend, would that discredit them from the tail? No, it's, it, what they've shown, what Falkirk have shown, is that they can put a run together. They've shown that they're consistent, they're really organised, they have good quality throughout the team and they're expertly managed. So we know, we know it's a really good threat. Um, and any team that could put a run together will always pose that challenge and we know they can do that so there's you never underestimate the opponent it's just about us if we can do what we do well we'll be in good shape same metric same and it's every week it's just about us doing what we do well they struggle against Dundee in the week in the cup does that give you any sense of the gap between championship and premiership i think the first hour they didn't struggle maybe i saw a different game but i thought the first hour they they, they had they would have been very comfortable with the first hour um, but I don't, this gap is not, as far as I see it, it's nowhere near as big as you guys make out. I think it's a far closer gap between the top three or four in the Championship and the Premier League. Team news, just weekend uh, All fitting well, apart from, um, apart from Temps, we're all fitting well. Uh, who was out the weekend? Andy Allen. Uh, Jason Holt. Uh, Jason Holt, you guys any? Jason trained this morning, so uh, we're pleased with that. Was that, was that any injury? Yeah, he's got, he got a whack on the knee, it was an eight to ten day and, and hopefully he's over that. And, Sassy will be 10 days, so fingers crossed he's all fine.